Hi, my name is Bianca Askew, and excuse me, <laughs> this is my channel, and on here, we're going to be talking about behaviors, we're going to be talking about um, how behaviors affect our daily lives, um, we're going to be talking about healing, we're going to be talking about um, spiritual um spiritual ways of feeling we're going to be talking about how to keep our mental healthy um we're just going to be talking about a whole lot of different things to help encourage each other to help uplift each other um so that we can all stay strong as a collective um when i say a collective i mean a like-minded collective that believes in a higher power that believes that there's only one source but that you know just like we have physical resources we also have spiritual resources out there available to us um that we can use to help us manifest things in the physical as well as um help us to ascend uh to a higher level um so once we understand as humans that we we ultimately feel that we have feelings, um, that we have to put those in perspective, um, as well as the things that, um, that we come across daily as, as when I say physical aspects of things, I'm just keep it simple, as simple. So if we have a feeling that, um, uh, either like, um, that we're sad. Okay. We're sad, right? We could be sad because someone hurt our feelings. We could be sad because we're not able to find um, the right TV uh, station, the channel on the TV. Or we could be sad because we can't find this remote in general. But in relation to the physical and the spiritual we have the, and the feelings of things, we have to put that into perspective and know that just because we're sad because we can't find our favorite tv station or just because we might be sad because we can't find the remote or we just might be sad because someone did something to us or however we have to put that in perspective to know that we can't allow that to take our energy down or to keep us from persevering or to keep us from switching to a, a different frequency or to a different emotion uh, such as happiness or joy um, I just wanted to share this with you real quickly. Um, I, I've been reading this book and it's, it, 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 I don't know how old it is. It's without regret, be more, see more, achieve more. That really matters. And it's by J. Michael Godfrey, I'm giving him all credit where credit is due. <laughs> but, uh, one thing that I, uh, read in this book that really stood out to me, um, cause it's, it just felt if it, I know we're in 2021 right now, which is, uh, if you add the numbers up 2021 20, equals to five, which represents change versus, uh, last year it was 2020. Uh, it represent if four equal to four, but it represented so much more, something very much more different for us. It, it let us see that, you know, we can't keep doing the same cycles and, and expect different changes. Um, we have to do things differently. Uh, yes, uh, God can show us the way and yes, we can grow some, but are we really going to grow into our full potential? And, and that's the thing right there. We have to step outside of our comfort zone in order to do that. Um, and yes, the, yet amongst all of the COVID-19 and us still trying to work and us trying to maintain families and households and everything like that, uh, with all of that conflict going on, we can still look at it in a good light. And that is, is what, uh, the significance here. And that's what I, 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 I came on here to, to share with you guys in reading without regret. Conflict is good. Okay. Conflict is good. Let's look at conflict as being good, right? Um, have we ever thought about how conflict could be good? Because the first thing that comes to our mind is that conflict is bad. We don't want to argue. We don't want to do any of those things, right? So, Mr. Um, Godfrey, and I hope I'm saying his name right, Mr. Godfrey says, he says, I tell my students, I believe conflict is a good thing. And then he says their faces show confusion. He says, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure they think that, I, you know, I'm crazy. I, wh where did I get that from? So, though we know conflict can escalate to a level that can be bad, you know, and can and can create fertile ground for regret 
It also can be healthy, he says, constructive and worthy of embrace. And that's the significance here. Yet amongst all of those things, all of the conflict that we may have experienced before 2020 or that we experienced in 2020, we are able to turn that into a good thing in 2021 by hopefully doing things differently. He says conflict is good when the focus is on an issue such as solving a problem or settling a disagreement. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes we fail to clearly understand one another's words, thoughts, or intentions. This is where the conflict occurs. We, of course, have many differences of, in opinions about schedules, finances, priorities that produce conflict. And I even thought about that example on the job with our supervisor, how our schedules are done. That can also um, produce conflict. And then we have to be able to, um, come to, come to an agreement or come to a mind, hopefully to still be able to perform functionally in that environment, even in our households and in our families, when a wife and a husband don't see eye to eye, they have to find a common ground to agree. However, to make our conflicts about issues and not about one another, that's the significance. The conflict is about the issue. It's not about the person. It's about the issue, not about the person necessarily. It's the issue that is the trigger for our feelings. And then once we're able to put our feelings into perspective, then we can realize that we're able to separate ourselves from the conflict. The conflict is the issue. We can always work around that. We just have to understand how to mentally process it. And so because of this, we have spirited discussions that help us grow together and individually. Oh, that's key there. He says, this makes it good conflict. What? So settling a disagreement can involve seeking agreement enough to move forward or agreeing to disagree and walking away with a good, respectable, respectful personal relationship in a win-win situation. So that's, that's one thing you can do there too. Agree to disagree agree to disagree but yet still have enough respect for the other person or have enough respect for the issue not it's not necessarily the person is having enough respect of course for the person foremost you know foremost but respect for the issue that's causing the conflict and it can be good conflict because if you bring it up and discuss it because it needed to be discussed that's you allowing yourself to express yourself in a good manner in a good manner let's look at conflict in a good way not in a bad way in a good way okay so he says the best problem solving requires that everyone place their opinions on the table and that each opinion be respected and valued by others even though they they may not agree Healthy, energetic collaboration using contributions from each person can sift out a better answer than any individual could have achieved on their own. Ooh, fellowship, coming together, teamwork, all of those things in, in different settings. It doesn't matter whether it be in church, whether it be on the job, whether it be at school, however, okay? In such settings, we are wise to, to, to hold and communicate our own opinions, but to hold them loosely lest we miss a learning opportunity. So it's okay to stand up for yourself and to voice your opinion or to voice that there might be an issue arising because you're not able to um, come to the same opinion or come to an agreement. It's okay. It's okay with that. But let's not get lost in only that side of it there has to be another side as well in order to find a solution so good thing is is look at it in the other person's uh look at it from the other person's perspectives or, or try to put on the other person's shoes and then he says argument is an important part of managing conflict argument is an important part of managing conflict wow 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 in fact, it is a classic skill that involves very calculated, respectful, and orderly debate and has been the birthplace of many of the ideologies, theologies, ethical stances, and philosophies that guide our lives and social interactions. Wow. Wow. And see, even then, sometimes we look at conflict as a negative connotation, argument as a negative connotation, but yet and still we know that if there's two sides that want that each party has to argue in support of their claim. You know, in order to get their point across. 
you know, to express themselves in order for us to know that, in fact, there is a conflict with the issue. You know, that everybody's not seeing eye to eye. That's really cool. Okay. All right. So then it says, of course, you know, an argument can be handled in a good or a bad way or a positive or negative light. And, of course, in an argument, people can get anxious. Okay. Right? And let their behavior get out of hand. And so, like I just said, you know, we look at argument as a negative connotation. And, and let's not try to do that here because, you know, if we look at it from a different perspective to broaden our horizons mentally, then, hey, we may be more successful in having more of the types of arguments or conversations that we want instead of what we don't want. On here, we're looking at self-reflection, self-reflection, self okay? So, conflict is good because it creates opportunities to learn new things. It can be unsettling to encounter an opinion that is different from yours about something important. And yes, of course, uh, we have lots of religious d debates talking about this religion is better than the other. This religion is better this, than this one because of this one. And I think this way about this religion. Even s same people in the two people in the same religion can have two different uh, perspectives or thoughts or ideas about that religion within itself, is, which is, you know, that's life. That's life, right? But this unsettling experience shakes you out of a very uncomfortable frame of mind. And when it does that, it causes you to think differently. It causes you to, to become curious and for you to try to explore, to see, well, maybe is there something else out there or, or to try to validate what you're thinking about that. Okay, and so when your confidence is shaken, when you when you what you pre previously believed in does not make sense as it once did, this discomfort he says creates a need to learn in order to restore a sense of equilibrium. Mm. So a lot of us were trying to grab for a sense of equilibrium in 2020, realizing that the equilibrium that we once knew is is no longer stable it's no longer a whole foundation um which caused us to believe a lot of different things which caused us to to, to go and to explore and to discover and research things for ourselves and to think more individually so it says conflict is good because it can help you gain understanding of the give and take skills needed for living in community with others and sharpen these skills and that's key because we need to sharpen these skills as we live in these communities to help strengthen each other, to help keep our awareness um, out there and to not become blind and misled um, into things that um, cause us uncertainty, things that cause more conflict um, than problem solving. <laughs> 